One of the questions I most often receive is how to calculate volume. No, not that type of volume, but rather the volume of a subwoofer enclosure, a function that is based on the width, depth, and height of the box. And what do you do if the box is a strange shape, like a wedge, or not a shape at all? Let's take a look. Volume is the quantity of space enclosed by a three-dimensional boundary. For example, if we had a one inch by one inch by one inch cube, the total volume would be one inch. Now let's say we took a bunch of these cubes and made them into a much larger cube that was three inch by three inch by three inch. In this case, we would have three times three times three, which equals 27 cubes. If we break this out, we can see that we have three rows of nine cubes each. Nine plus nine plus nine is also equal to 27 cubic inches. With this understanding of volume, we can see how it applies to car audio. When we are measuring for a car audio enclosure, we want to measure our width, our depth, and our height within the vehicle. For our first example, let's say that we measured a width of 36 inches, a depth of 18 inches, and a height of 15 inches. Now let's say that our box design has a requirement of being two cubic feet of air volume. Well, that means that we'll need to pick a variable so that we can control the actual volume of the box. So let's say that our height of 15 inches is unknown. We begin sketching out our available room so that we can determine the variable height. An important number for us to remember here in the United States is 1,728. That's the magic number. Actually, it's how many cubic inches are in a cubic foot. It's 12 by 12 by 12. So we're gonna use this to determine how many cubic inches we need to have our goal of two cubic feet. So we simply multiply two times 1,728, which gives us 3,456 cubic inches that are needed for this enclosure. We can now use simple algebra and divide 3,456 by 18, and then divide by 36 to find that variable height, which ends up being 5.3 inches. Now it's obvious that 5.3 inches is not a very good box height. This is where the art of subwoofer box design comes into play. Since we know that we want our height to be larger, we can then shrink the other two dimensions and once again solve for the height. In this case, we come up with 14.4. All right, an acceptable result, but this just scratches the surface of volume calculation. What about the fact that our subwoofer takes up space and has a volume? And what about all the wood and bracing inside that also has a volume? What if there's even a narwhal in our box? That takes up volume too. How can we calculate that? Let's start with taking a look at our subwoofer displacement. Subwoofer displacement is the volume that the actual subwoofer itself takes up within the enclosure. This is a spec that can be found on the manufacturer's website. We will use it by adding to the total volume that we need for the box. So in this case, as an example, we found that this particular 12-inch subwoofer was 0.18 cubic feet in volume. So we simply added it to our original 2 cubic feet for a total of 2.18 cubic feet. Now what about the wooden sides of the box? How does that apply to the volume? Well, as an example, let's say that we have 1-inch thick wood and we have a box that's sized 14 inches by 12 inches by 20 inches. We simply subtract two inches from each dimension, one inch for each side of the wooden box, and we come up with 12 inches by 10 inches by 18 inches. These values are then used to determine the volume of the box. So let's go back to our original example, factor in the displacement of the subwoofer, and also factor in the thickness of the wood, and we find that we come up with a much different answer than the 14.4 before. In fact, we come up with 20.92 inches for the height. This goes to show just how important it is to take into account everything that can affect the volume of our enclosure, something that the online calculators won't do for you. But whoa, wait, what if we want to do a wedge style enclosure with an angled face? A wedge enclosure is a combination of a rectangular section and a triangular section. Given the dimensions shown, we can determine that the volume of the rectangular section is the 10 inch height multiplied by the five inch width multiplied by the variable depth of the box. We can then determine that the volume of the triangular section is the five inches along the bottom, multiplied by the 10 inch height, multiplied by one half because it's a triangle, and then multiplied by the variable depth. To find the total volume, we simply add the rectangular section and the triangular section. 
So we have 50 times the variable plus 25 times the variable, which is 75 times the variable. Assuming that these dimensions are for the inside of the box, we can then solve for our goal of two cubic feet by taking 3,456 cubic inches and divided by 75, which gives us approximately 46 inches on the depth of the wedge style enclosure. It goes without saying that ultimately you can use these different geometrical formulas to find the volume of different sizes and different shaped enclosures. In the case of a cylinder, you can use the area of a circle, pi r squared, multiplied by the length of that cylinder, which will then give you the volume. And in this example, we once again solve for the total length to give us a cylinder that has a volume of 2 cubic feet. Becoming an expert at these formulas will allow you to combine different shapes and come up with more complicated shaped enclosures. Another common misunderstanding that I'd like to clarify for you is the difference between port volume and the box volume itself. In this case, let's say that we have a slot ported box with the port on the right hand side. The port volume is determined by the cross-sectional area of the port multiplied by the length of the port, and it is shown in what I have highlighted blue on this illustration. So if someone asked how much airspace the sub actually had, and in this case let's say it had 2 cubic feet, we'd be referring to the area shown in the pink highlighting. The port volume added to the air volume is what gives you your net volume for the subwoofer enclosure. Finally, let's say we have a very complicated enclosure with complex curves. How can we possibly determine the volume? Packing peanuts are a fabricator's best friend. We'll start with filling the enclosure with the packing peanuts. We can then transfer them to a box of a known size, preferably a 12 inch by 12 inch by 12 inch box, which is equal to one cubic foot. We then know that if we fill our one cubic foot enclosure three and a half times, we have three and a half cubic feet in our unknown enclosure volume. Now for your homework problem. Let's say you're given a sealed subwoofer enclosure that has external dimensions of 18 inches by 20 inches by 15 inches. The wood thickness is 3 quarters of an inch and the subwoofer displacement is 0.21 cubic feet. There is also a cylindrical brace going across the enclosure that has a radius of a half inch and a length of 18 and a half inches. Given these parameters, what is the air volume for this enclosure? I hope this helped clear up a few things about volume. If you have an additional basic car audio question, ask it in the comments below.